Right now, we want to get to Andy Carson. He joins us from Southeast Portland. Hi, Andy. Good morning, guys. Yes, at uh, Oaks Bottom Forge, where today we are going to be making knives, uh, or at least learning and watching people make knives. Very unique, very unusual, and, and, and one of those things that's very Portland, and I'm excited to show that to you here this morning. Uh, big, big day out there for a lot of things going on in the world. Yeah, I'm thinking it's best that Andy Carson be careful when he's touching the knives this morning. <laughs> Just a thought. I think that's a good idea. Yes. Yes, I'll be very, very, very careful. We're at uh, Oaks Bottom Forge here this morning, which, guys, this is fascinating to me. Uh, have you heard of a place where, where they make handmade knives? Have you heard of this before? I've heard of the concept, yes. Okay. Yes, but right here in Portland, they do this. They've been around for about three years now, and they're just now starting to do classes and teaching people, and, and you will start with the raw material, and it's all handmade. There's no machinery involved. It's like the old-school way of making knives, and so we're going to watch that process as we uh, go through the morning, and uh, it, it is quite interesting. Blacksmithing and all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, next door, we're going to go over there a little bit. They've got the fire. They've got the anvil. They've got the hammers, and uh, we will watch uh, this process, and the kiln, and it goes on and on and on. I'm just scratching the surface, just starting to learn a little bit so far here this morning. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, chance that we could see today and Tuesday. That is your weather. And Tony, some of the uh, the tools used right here to make yeah. the knives. Okay? So cool. This is, this is old school. We're, we're, this yeah. is from scratch, my friend. I love this yeah. already. I was just on their website. So yeah, it looks like gorgeous stuff. Much more to come. So uh, we'll be staying tuned for that. Meantime, we go to... All right, let's get back to Andy Carson now. He is introducing us to a really neat place this morning. Hi, Andy. And you could protect us yes, from sir, any ghosts, morning, couldn't you? Uh, Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what he said. Uh, Oaks Bottom Forge is where we are here this you morning. Knives. Look you at this. This, this is the, the beginning, okay? Do you see what we have right here? This is uh, somewhat of the raw material. And then after how many hours? About eight hours of work or so? Yes, sir. It can turn into this right here. Okay, you, you so see Andy, that knife that I have a question. About? The one yes. in your left hand. What's that? That is hand forged as well, or is that cut from a machine? Where do we start? The, this one's cut from a machine, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. This is cut from a machine. Gotcha. But then... No more machines are used other right. than the human machine uh, to eventually make it into this uh, this baby right here. And uh, they're using they're using hammers, they're using the uh, the anvils, they're using heat, they're using uh, fire kilns, uh, ashes, uh, all kinds of things to eventually get it into this right here. So uh, how cool to have your own custom-made knife, perhaps one that you made yourself. And so uh, we're going to be uh, doing that, as well as some other things here this morning. And they said, they said, just don't poke it in your eye. So I'm going to set it down right there so I don't poke myself in the eye, right there. All right, we are hands-free. Let's go right now to the temperatures we have around. Uh, so let's get over to Andy Carson with a look at our first live local forecast. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, my friends. We're right here at Oaks Bottom Forge, and we are learning all about uh, knife making and the handles, and, uh, and, and that's just a little bit. It goes on and on and on, uh, and we'll get uh, hands-on here as we go throughout the morning. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite interesting. A lot of new stuff here. It's something, you know, in what? However many years have been doing this, never done anything like this before. So uh, this is fun. Outfitter's guide for the day today. Let's go. All right. Uh, Andy Carson is in uh, Southeast Portland this morning. He joins us now with the weather Hello. forecast. Hi, Andy. Yeah, you Hey, how are you guys? Good to see you here this morning. Now, uh, we are at uh, Oaks Bottom Forge here this morning, and I'm with Pat, and, and you're the man behind this, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we, we talked earlier about the fact that uh, this is the, the base material that you get when making a knife. That's, yes? that's what we start with, yes, sir. And, and where does this come from? Uh, we uh, have a water jet cut through Portland Water Jet Company. There you go. And then eventually it will become this knife or exactly. something similar to this. And But then there's also the handle that you put on there. Yes, what sir. is this handle made of? That's a stabilized, uh, that one's stabilized redwood burl. Uh-huh. But this is a, something, this is almost the raw material that will become a handle. And what is this made of? That is Alaskan moose antler. Alaskan moose antler. Yes, sir, it is. And and so are you making? You're making this for the, the some folks up in Alaska. Alaska knife company. There you go. Right. So you're using every part of the animal. I'm and, sure. And basically tree as well. And, and yeah. oh, and, and there's also stuff that they make with the uh, trees, and, and and it goes on and on and on. And this is what this kind of uh, uh, I guess technology is from. How many years ago? When was this kind of stuff started? The thousands of years ago. Thousands. Since heat started. <laughs> Since the beginning of heat. 
heat this has been going on. So we're going to learn. People have been hanging around fire a long time. Yeah, they have been. It's a mm, fire good. Uh, so we are going to uh, do more of this uh, throughout the morning. Really, really cool stuff. Let's go right now to the temperatures we have around the northwest this morning on Monday and Tuesday. That is your weather. So, Tony, take a look yeah. at this. This is yeah. a bunch of knives right there, and that's in rice. Do you know why that's why they're all poked down there into rice? I visited the website. This is how I know. It keeps the knives dry uh, and just uh, keeps them from getting scuffed up or losing their edge. There you go. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 not part of the meal, uh, but it is. It keeps them dry, just like just yeah, like throwing your cell phone in one of these if it uh, falls in the toilet, right? That's correct. Right. Yes. Yeah, don't don't use cooked rice. Uh, I I can tell already. No. This is one of those shows where I'm going to go home after after work today and open my utility drawer and go. You call yourselves knives. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> these are so much better. Uh, but great stuff. Can't wait to see what else they have in store down there. Uh, All right. Andy Carson joins us once again from Southeast Portland. Hi, Andy. Hi, good morning, guys. Uh, Oaks Bottom Forge. So far, we've talked mainly this morning about the knives and the uh, the handmade knives and handles and things that they have. But uh, I'm here with Pat, and there are lots of other things that you guys have that I'm guessing pretty much handmade as well. We do. Yes. yes sir. So, for example, what do we have uh, right over here that's the, lined up? Uh, this is walnut and the, uh, wood. This uh, raw, uh, just the basic wood. So, if people want a cutting board, mm -hmm. uh, we can make a cutting board. If they want to make a knife board for the wall, that they have a choice so, of whatever they want. And is it you guys can make it, or you also teach classes on how to make it. Uh, we we make we make it. You here, make those, right? okay, we okay. Do. So uh, then we of course we've uh, we've looked at the uh, knives, and there's even uh, the hatchet that we have uh, right here. And then right. and then what is what is this that's right here that you uh, have? That's called chain mail. It's one of the classes that we offer. Chain mail. Yes, sir. Was, so not like the old letters that you would send to somebody. No, uh, but this no, is, no, sir. This is <laughs> uh, and, and why would somebody want that? Uh, it, it just is a good old uh, old world craft. Uh -huh. They they had made whole suits of body armor uh, with that. Um, and yeah, well, I they think make uh, not that anybody would want to make one, but they make the the, the shark proof. There, it's it's um, shark proof. Yes. See, now that See? makes sense. I need some shark proof stuff. If you I'm ever needed there. one. Yes, yes, because you never know. I've Those sharks know. are sneaky. They are. <laughs> Sign me up for that <laughs> class. Let's go right now. To, we're going to talk a little bit about rainfall. And uh, with that, we'll turn to Andy Carson now for your first live local forecast. Good morning, Andy. Yeah. Uh, Good one. Kim, I'm seeing stuff with your name written all over it. Are you oh, ready? Yes. Ha oh, yes. How about this right here? I yeah. love that. Dirt. Yeah. And then, and then another thing from uh, Oaks Bottom Forge, an entire outfit for you, Miss Moss, uh, from the, nice. uh, the, the, the hat right up there. Andy, the, uh, could you try that oh, on yes. for me and model it just so I can see how it hangs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and look, your own holster. And uh, a knife right there to go along with I it. I love it. Mm, yeah, yeah, cameras. Oh, and then, and then of course your boots as as a planter. That that all comes together as well. Sign me up, yep. cowboy. I knew you would be. I knew you would be. Let's go right now to the cycling forecast for the day today. All right, uh, let's get back to Andy Carson now. He's talking knives and the weather. Maybe not in that order, but we'll we'll see how it plays out. How you doing, Andy? Yeah, it, it will be in that order this time. There, Pete, doing great. Uh, I'm, I'm learning all kinds of things about knives and uh, locally made lives, <laughs> lives, knives. Uh, <laughs> and I am uh, right now with Pat, and uh, you have a combination going on right here. What do we have right here? That's a keeping knife combo, is what we call that. Okay, so, so I'm looking at these knives, and and the uh, they they have a, a much different look than your traditional knife that you might see at the store. Um, I, I'm guessing there's something special about that. We do. We we uh, just use a charcoal burning forge, a handheld hammer, and an anvil. And that's it. That's it. And the it, advantage is beyond just the fact that it's handmade. But these things are going to stay sharp forever, right? For, forever. Yeah. They. And, it's 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 just it's a step above. It's like it's like it's you're in to an old school muscle car <laughs> instead of uh, something that's you know you know something new and uh, all the bells and whistles. Right. Yeah. That's yes, sir. Yeah. It's it's, it's raw. It's it's a pretty tough knife there. It's, it's tough, yeah. And, and wait till you see where they make them. We're going to go over there coming up at the six o'clock hour and beyond, uh, and that is uh, quite visual and quite fascinating as well. Uh, let's go right now. Talk a little bit about the potential for severe weather across. Tony, 
I look at these knives, <laughs> and they look incredibly sharp, and I understand they are incredibly sharp. They are, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, they are, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> at some point, I do want to see the first aid kit, uh, which I'm sure is yeah. at the ready. Let's <laughs> we'll see where that is. Because <laughs> we're all very worried about your little fingertips this morning. Uh, here we go, on to the freeways. Let's get back to Andy now. And uh, Andy, what a cool space that you're at there. Cool it spot. Is. Oaks Bottom Forge here this morning, and uh, we have uh, all these great knives, and I have Pat with me right here. Now, uh, this knife right here, what is what is this used for? That's the chef knife. Oh, okay. Used for the kitchen. So, you, you chopping vegetables, uh, meat, uh, any of that kind of stuff? Yes, sir. Yeah, piece of cake. Now, we don't have that with us, but we do have a piece of paper. We do. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you want to do this, to just I to do, demonstrate I, what I'm we have? I'm happy to. Okay, there we go, and, and then I'll hand you that. There we go. Just to, just to show you. Uh, boom. Just like that. That could be that could be your tomato slices. Nice that's thin just, tomato slices, if you want, right there. That's, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and again, you keep them in the rice because that keeps them from rusting. Well, yeah. If you wash it and dry it, then you put it in the rice. And if there's moisture there, it'll help pull that out. It, but but if you were to not put it in rice, wash it, you know, and, and dry it, and then put it into uh, your drawer, would it would it start to rust then? Uh, your best not. I mean, if you use it every day, mm -hmm. then it shouldn't be an issue. But if it just sits there. It could. But it'll probably still be the sharpest knife you'll it have will in the be whole drawer. Yes, sir. There it is. So it's it, it, much like myself. It's not about the looks. It's about the utility, right? And sharpness. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go right now to the temperatures we have around the northwest. All right. So we'll get to those stories in just a bit. Right now, let's get to Andy Carson. Are you guys ready for this? I am about to go right inside there. Uh, Oaks Bottom Forge here this morning, and it's where they do handmade metal items, including knives. And I'm going to get in there with all the flames and the metal and the anvils and the hammers and uh, and make some magic here this morning. Outfitter's Guide for the day today. Andy Carson, I, the, the, the manliness in that room is, is oh. r remarkable. Oh, and then you got the knife it makers is, there cool. as well. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. This is Wayne, and Wayne, uh, what do you, you just uh, went over there and and cut this rod right here, right, right, and and so they teach classes right here. Eventually, this will turn into this. Yeah, absolutely. Just a wall hook. The uh, the first thing we're going to be doing, making it pointy and then uh -huh. making it long. Okay. Drawing out this whole paper so we can do the rest of it. All right. So uh, we, you did that part. There were sparks flying already. Oh, yeah. In the first 30 seconds of the process, right? It here. has to be. Uh, so you teach classes. Here is that correct? I do. Okay, and then, so you start with this, and then eventually you move on to making a knife. Um, you can. It depends on what people want from the class. Uh huh. Uh, some people just want to make one knife. That's fine. Uh, some people want to be a bladesmith, which is a different thing. So we have to make a lot of leaves. There's no one right answer. Okay. It depends on uh, more like what are your goals on the class? All right. Have a good experience. My yeah, my goal is to make one of these and not get hurt. Okay. So that's <laughs> a good. That's a good thing. And then a knife and not get hurt. And All right. We'll, we'll see what we can do. We here can try morning. that. So. We're I have to do a little bit of weather, and then I'll find out the next process that we have with All this. All right. Uh, let's go right now to the temperatures we have around the northwest this morning, Tuesday. Tony Martinez, this is... <laughs> oh, man. This is so cool right here. Fire and steel. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. And lots, lots of sparks. Uh, what, what am I going to do next here with this? We're going to heat it up. We're going to heat it up. going to heat it up. There I need go. one of those things. Tong. Tongs. Tongs. Well, yes. Yeah. Just Andy. remember, from this point on, <laughs> all metal is hot, even if it doesn't look like it. Ooh. Okay. Metal stops glowing. Let's take it, take it. A thousand degrees. <laughs> okay. So, yep. All right. It'll, all right. It'll stay it's, well, I, it comes, I don't know where they're hiding it, Andy, but somewhere in there, I'm sure they have the equipment to make micro brew. I just, I just know it. It's, it's <laughs> behind so. a corner yeah. or under the anvil or something, but we'll find it. Somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Uh, back up to go to Air 12 right now. Yeah, it's so important. All right, Andy Carson. Wow, you've got you got all the gear on now. Here we go. Yep, uh, I'm right in here. I'm getting that uh, that piece of metal out of the fire, and uh, I'm supposed to say hot, hot. And then I walk over here, and I, I keep it down low, and I put it uh, right here at the edge, like that. Right at the edge. And then your hand to your hip. Make sure you're holding it flat to the anvil. Flat to the, and then I just hit it right there. Hit it right there. What what second? Somewhere do? close to a 45 degree angle. So coming right there. Okay. There you go. Is that right? Yep. How much do I do that? Keep doing that. Hold it a little bit farther onto the anvil right there. Uh huh. There you go. Keep doing that. Okay. How long do I do this? Until it starts moving. Is it, in, oh, is it not moving yet? Yeah. So when you get comfortable with the way you're holding it, 
<laughs> a little bit higher. You don't even have to think about hitting it harder. It'll already, it'll have more time to speed up as you're hitting it. All right. The weight will do it for you. All right. And yeah. I'm eventually going to make this into a hook, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Not a fishing hook, but like Not a, a fishing hook, hook All right. unless you really want it to. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's going to take a lot of a lot of pounding. Oaks Bottom Forge, where we are here this morning, I'm going to uh, hand this over to you while I take care of a little bit of weather. In Absolutely. And if, if you want to advance that, that's fine. I will. Uh, let's go right now and uh, talk a little bit about uh, where we are as far as, as we get into a Monday and Tuesday of next week. So where are we now? Is it back in the fire? It is back in the fire. <laughs> okay. All right. Andy, got, it needs to be hot to keep doing that. It needs to be hot to keep doing that. You, you probably missed this, but when you were first getting your first little taps there going, uh, Mike panned over to the guy to your right. He was just working it. And then it went back to you. It was like, before, hey, after. It's my first time. I know, I know. It was just, it was You're it was doing fun. great. Okay, so like this again? Yep. Or right. a little bit more flat. A little, little bit, bit more flat. There we go. And then start wailing on it. Yeah, whale. whale on it. Whale is the key yeah. word, whale. I think. You don't have to worry about being accurate just yet. Whale! We're just trying to move it. I've never worried about being accurate. Oh. I'm a weatherman. Yeah. 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 All right. That's why hey, they don't uh, pay me to use, like, to computers or, like, dash out to, sand uh, anything. Air 12 real quick here. I get you caught up. 6.30 is the time. Let's get over to Andy for uh, more on our forecast and uh, his blacksmithing skills. Oh, yeah. The skills, that's for me, that you're, you're pushing the term there. You're stretching it. Uh, but we're working on it here this morning at Oaks Bottom Forge. Uh, I'm working on a hook uh, that, that I'll be making. It's like in shop class when I made the letter opener. It's, it's the beginning stages right there. Let's go right now to the cycling forecast for the day today. <laughs> right. Hey, let's get back to Andy Carson now. He's in southeast Portland. Andy, good morning once Hot. again. Uh, good morning. Uh, right here at Oaks Bottom Forge. And Wayne, what, what am I doing now? I'm, now? I'm making a hook. Hold it right here in the middle of the end bill uh -huh. and start hitting it straight down into it. Straight down into it. Boom. Just like that. And is that right? Yeah, that looks great. Let's go ahead and rotate it. How hot How hot is this piece of metal right here? Somewhere around 2,000 degrees. Oh. That's, that's the uh, really nice orange rain and then and then it starts to fade how long do you normally have before it's faded and you have to go back in the heat depends on the size of steel okay uh this is mild steel so we hit it again now yeah okay. keep hitting it mild steel mild steel it's actually a low enough carbon content it's not like hitting tool steel like a knife uh -huh. we never hit that cold it's it's likely to crack it later on uh-huh this we still don't want to hit it too cold but it's a little bit more forgiving it's getting cold in it right now yeah. all right i'll hand you that right there Thank and you. i'll do a little bit of weather this is exhausting, and you do this eight hours a day. <laughs> I do it 15 seconds at a time. Let's go right now talk about where we have the chance for That is your weather. And, Tony, that piece of metal I'm working on, eventually what it's supposed to uh, look like is this. Okay. 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 We have complete confidence in you. It's yes. looking good. All right. Uh, more coming Glad up with Andy this that, morning. Yes. Uh, quickly up to Aaron. Perhaps you want to be a blacksmith. Boy, with the, the lovely products they're making there, Andy. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning all kinds of stuff. One is that there are not a lot of people that do this, right, Wayne, to be a blacksmith, because not it's hard work. It can be hard. Smash it here? Absolutely. And uh, again, I'm working on a hook right here. This is uh, Oaks Bottom Forge. Turn it. Yep. And uh, how long have you been a, a blacksmith? Uh, about seven years. And you're just uh, seven years. For, that that seems like uh, quite some time, and and it's, it's such a rare uh, job, isn't it? Yeah, I wanted to do this when I was young, but uh, you know, people kept saying uh, you you got to make more money. So um, I, I don't know. Eventually, I was just like, I'd rather do this. There you go. I just love doing it. Yeah. I think that that's the major uh, factor behind being a blacksmith. Not that um, you know people try to make money or a lot of people want to fill that niche. Do you love doing it? There you go. Yeah, and you do. And I think that's got cold again, didn't it? Okay, here, I'll hand this back over to you. Thanks. And, and I'll take care of, uh, of some weather. It's, it is a labor of love. Uh, let's go right now to the uh, temperatures we have. Uh, that is your weather. See, Tony, you, once you, uh, you're pounding it there and yeah. it gets cold again, you take it back and you sure. put it back there in the coals again and then you bring it back out. And they make everything. All these tools right here, that's, that was made here. Yeah. Handmade. There you go. Well, and here's just an idea, a little, little uh, step saver for you. Instead of making a hook, why don't you just make a spike, and then you'd be done, I, call it a day. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> spike is done. <laughs> Your work is done here. Uh, here we go off to uh, Air 12. This but why don't you start okay. off with a look at the weather and a look at some knife making.
That's right. We're at uh, Oaks Bottom Forge, and this is a tool I'll be using in the next segment. Wait till you see what this baby can do. Uh, as far as the weather is concerned, it's off to a mild start this morning. Let's get back to Andy Carson in southeast Portland. Uh, Andy, have you broken a sweat yet, or did that happen long ago? <laughs> yeah. Well, just a nervous sweat more than anything. Uh, Wayne, go ahead and bring that over there. You know, we're working on making this hook, and uh, he decided for time's sake uh, just to uh, uh, go ahead and take over. So look at this process right here where he's bending that hot metal. Uh, to make it a bench, oh, and what a delicate touch, to make it into this hook that we're working on. And uh, it, you've, uh, how long does it normally take for you to, to put it together a hook yourself? Um, somewhere around 15 minutes. 15 minutes. But what if it's some, a rookie like me, how long would it normally take? Usually about three hours. <laughs> so... There is a bit of a learning curve right there. So did you see how he did that? Uh, next, we're going to make the little twisty thing that we have on uh, the hook that is right here. But I'll take care of that right after we do a little bit of weather information. So let's go to that right now. That's your weather. Okay, Wayne, are we ready? Are we ready to do the final process here? All right, we had to reheat the hook right there. We need to make the uh, swirly things there in the middle. And uh, there, it's, it's quite the process. And the fact that he can do that in 15 minutes just blows me away. Wow. So is it... Give me one second to, one to second. supercharge it. He's going to supercharge it. Supercharge! We're putting on the supercharge, Tony. Yes! Yes! Yeah. We're heating it up. Oh, this so, is it, cool. if you can hang with me for just a second, yeah. I'm going to do this. Strong enough? Yeah. You ready? Uh, let's do it. I'm strong enough. Meet me at the uh, vice. I'm, meet you here. Okay, we're right here. There's the vice right there. Hot! All right. It's going in there. I'm nervous. I feel like I should have two gloves. Okay, what do I do? Grab it at the top. With what? How? With the huh? uh, side that fits just right. Right there. Start twisting. Go. Start twisting. Whoa. Be careful. How much do I just keep? When you're happy. Andy, when I'm you're happy. Doing great. And you like the twist, oh, you're done. Awesome. Watch that right there. You go. Oh. Andy, right there. I, I right there. I kind of feel like yeah. you should. Because then we're going to make the hook and it'll be facing the correct side. And I'm happy. You should yeah. put in your belt buckle for that. Yeah. And you should make it. <laughs> yes, I will. All right, cool. Tony, now it's you, buddy. Oh, okay, That's yeah. Cool. Great stuff this morning, Andy. Thanks so much for bringing that to us. Uh, more to come. Meantime, Andy Carson, uh, moments ago, he was creating a, a hook out of molten metal. It was quite impressive. Yes, yes. We're just about uh, done with the hook right now. Wayne, uh, what do we have? You reheated it. And the last thing, we're going to quench the tip. Uh-huh. Right there in the water. We're going to hit it on the tip. Uh-huh. And then he puts this in, and you, you're going to... Oh, make the hook right there. Look at that. So you actually teach classes here, right? Absolutely. So people can sign up and they can come in here and they can learn how to make their own hook and then and, and beyond from there. Is that Absolutely correct? they can. Right. It's really fun, but this is a really good first step. Um, I honestly don't mind if you destroy your first hook because uh -huh. I'd rather you learn more on that so you're more confident when you get the rest of what you're making. So yeah. now with this... You're going to cool that off. And I'm happy with it. We're happy with it. Put it right down in there, and uh, ah! <laughs> he scared me. Uh, okay, so and and there it is. And now you can you could hang. You just put that on the wall, yep. and you can hang anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there it is. I love it. Uh, let's take a look at some weather information here, real quick, into the 50s. That's your weather. Now, Tony, here's what would happen. I would come here and I would make this beautiful hook right there, and then I would take it home and I'd hammer it into the wall and I'd miss this yeah. dead first thing I hung on there. It would it, come down. No. <laughs> It'll never come down. <laughs> Basically, uh, depending on where you want it, you can uh, treat it a little bit, you can oil it, you can wax it, um, you can just buff it up and put it right there in the wall if you got a dry room. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, <laughs> just depends on what you want to do there with it. Go. Well, hey. wait, let's, let's go to Tony because they're giving me the hook right now at the station. Well, and, hey, right, Andy, enough. real quick before we get the hook, uh, two questions for your next report. We want to know where they get their training and what they use to wash their hands in your next hit, okay? So work on that. We'll get you onto the freeways right now. Let's get to Andy Carson in Southeast Portland with our first live local weather forecast. Good morning once again, Andy. Good morning, right here, Oaks Bottom Forge, and I made this hook right here. Yay. Wow. Good Caitlin, job. Caitlin, are you impressed? Are you impressed by this hook that I made? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. you, thank you. I'm glad you're impressed. Uh, I'm sure nobody else is. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, and. and Okay, I did about 10% of the work on here, but uh, they actually have classes where you can learn to do this as well as some other things. We'll talk about that as we go through the morning. Let's go right now to some weather information. Andy Carson joins us once again. He's, uh, he's a, a blacksmith this morning, aren't you? Yes, yes, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Did you see that? <laughs> it was like, it was like, boom, there came the sparks. Uh, this is Cameron, also known as Cameron Cameron. Correct. And, and you're working on knives, is that right? I am, yeah. Okay, so what, what process, where are you right now on this particular knife? I am in the beginning processes of hammering and tapering out. Okay, so, so it starts off fairly thick, right? It's correct, It's a thick yeah. piece of, uh, of metal there. Yeah, about eighth inch. Okay. And, and, uh, and you can't cut anything with an eighth inch. No, no, you really can't. <laughs> okay, so you get that nice and hot, and then what happens? Now I'm just going to take it over to this anvil, and I'm just going to whack on it, whale on it, and thin it out. Uh huh. So this is basically what I do most days. You do how? How many hours a day will you do this? Uh, about six. So I take it you don't necessarily have a gym membership. You don't. You don't need to go work out somewhere. Well, I do for the other side. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, he just he'd be like my photographer. The camera's just he's huge That's on that side. That's essentially kind of the way it is. Yeah, he's he's the strength of a kitten on the other side, <laughs> and ten men with the camera side. I can relate to that. So so you're working on that right there, and I'm going to take care of a little bit of weather, and, and then we'll jump back and, and see how things are coming along right there. I have more questions for you as well. All right. Let's go right now. Talk a little bit. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Now, Tony, our traffic reporter, had a couple questions he wanted me to ask. One, where did you learn how to do this? Um, I learned at the uh, Portland Waldorf School. Okay. Uh, this was a required, uh, required class in my high school. As a junior, you have to take it. Really? Yeah. Where did you go to high school? Uh, Portland Waldorf High School. It's right there in Milwaukee. Oh, so, yeah. okay. There you go. Wow. And then the second question is, what do you use to get your hands clean? What's the, what's the, the soap <laughs> process? Uh, we have a special soap that really gets all the gunk off. <laughs> Usual hand soap doesn't quite do yeah. it for you. There you go. So, Tony, there. There are your answers. Well, it's actually, a special hand soap. I have to confess, Joe, you know, those questions were actually Kimberly's, and I think if we showed a close-up of his hands right now, she may very well melt right here on the set. Uh, I don't know if that's possible to get a good look at those, right there. those rugged right men. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Not too bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She <laughs> melt like hot steel. <laughs> uh, more come. What a great, great spot down there. It's a lot of fun watching that this morning. Uh, we'll get you on the freeway. Yes, all right. Andy Carson. He joins us live from southeast Portland, and uh, things are looking hot and not necessarily the forecast. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Oaks Bottom uh, Foraging, and I'm with Cameron right here. Just start wailing away. Just start wailing on it. Boom. Yeah. Move from the back to the front and just keep doing that. Good. We're making a knife right here, and uh, I'm going to flip it over now. Flip it over, yeah. And uh, this is what you will do for several hours a day, right? Yep, it's just essentially. Pounding. And then, and then, because you're young and strong like a bull, <laughs> they have you do this, and then the other guys will put the handles on. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's quite the process from beginning to end. How many hours would it typically take to make a knife like this one right here? It's hard to say. Um, I'd say in the total man hours without stoppage time, probably 24, 27 hours. Wow. Make so, one knife. So yeah. it not it's like 24, 27 hours, and then uh, the fact that it's going to be a better quality than you can find just about anywhere else, and it's going to stay sharp forever, yep. pretty much, you're going to pay a higher price for it. Mm -hmm. But that's why. I mean, it's, you, you're getting your money's worth. Do so you stick it back in Absolutely. there Absolutely. Stick it right back on no. top of the coals there. All right. Oh, I stuck it underneath there. I'll put it on top. All right. That's a very cool stuff right there. Uh, let's go right now to a little bit of weather information in Tuesday. So here's the other the, the thing that catches my eye. You'll do that several times. Get the thing thinned out. Mm -hmm. And then you stick it in one of these buckets. I don't know if you can see. Yep. The What's in the bucket right there? This is basically all the ash that the charcoal produces. Uh huh. And basically, what this does by just sticking it in the ash, the knife will cool at an even rate. That way, you know, if you put it just right on top of the fire here to cool, yeah, it's gonna be attracted to where the heat is and it's gonna bend. Gotcha. And that way, the knife won't stay straight. So this keeps the blade straight. So you're using everything, start to finish. Uh, yep. You probably then use that to, uh, you know, put in your garden and you grow your own stuff right there. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, we do a lot of stuff with it's, it. It's everything. I mean, I, yeah. I think somehow they made this cup. I don't know how yeah. they did it, but I think they did. Yes. Well, so. I, I think my my first hunch is still, uh, you know, solid. That there's a microbrewery in there somewhere. I just know it. So <laughs> uh, more on that coming up. But Andy, we'll get you on the freeways right now. Right now, let's get back to Andy Carson. He is in Southeast Portland. And Andy, uh, you've been, I don't know, quite productive this morning. Yes, yes, or at least showing off some very productive people uh, right here at Oaks uh, Valley, uh, Oaks Bottom Forge. I wanted to say Valley Forge for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, we're making knives right now, I mean, from scratch. And they said, oh, we've got something quite dramatic to show you next, as if everything else hasn't been dramatic. So stay tuned for that in the next segment. Let's go right now to the uh, Outfitters Guide for the right Okay, uh, Andy Carson this morning. Let's see, uh, he, he made a hook. He was making a knife there. He's been mm -hmm. standing around yep. watching, too. 
Yes. Uh, we're still working on that. And you were talking about a zoo. We're right here at Oaks Bottom uh, uh, Gore, uh, Forge. And there's there's a window right here in the street. People, you're almost like a, a, an animal at the zoo, right, Absolutely. Kevin? Absolutely. Yeah. We tell people not to knock on the glass yeah. either. It drives us crazy. Or to feed you. Yeah, well, yeah. no, they can feed oh, us. Oh, you can feed them. Yeah, okay. you can definitely right. feed them. So, so we've gone through the process of, of taking a, a thicker piece of metal, hammering it down, getting it uh, nice and thin to where it's a knife, and then it's been, uh, like, uh, what, what, what's happened after that, after you get it to the right area? What, 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 are the, what stage are these knives in right here? So these knives right now are getting ready to be hardened, which is... One one of the main things that I do. Uh -huh. um, when a knife is being is being made, we want to make it hard. Right. That's what actually gives that edge. You know, keeps a nice sharp edge to it. Okay. it it's what makes the knife useful. So we have that one nice and hot right there, and mm -hmm. you're going to you're going to harden it. Indeed. How do you do that? So basically, what happens is is when metal gets really hot, it expands. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to quench it at a certain rate. All steels quench at different rates to harden. Okay. And this this is O1 tool steel, so that means it gets quenched in oil. Now, when we do all our normal production knives, we quench it in special oil. We have a kiln that sets mm -hmm. it at a really specific temperature, so right. we know exactly how hard it's going to be. Uh -huh. This is more of an old-fashioned way we like to do it in the all forge. Right. You know, subspace, yada, yada, yada. Because we haven't been old-fashioned here yet this morning, so finally yeah, right. we're going old-fashioned. Okay. All right, so we take it like this. I make sure it's nice and straight, uh -huh. and then I stick Woo! it on in. <laughs> <laughs> and and so the, the flame came up because the blade itself was so hot. Indeed, and it combusts that oil right at the right on the top there, but uh -huh. cools down, goes out. You got to let it sit in the water and er, in the oil. And what I'm doing is I'm moving it around a little bit because when it goes in, it wants to boil all the oil right uh -huh. around it. So we're shaking it up, mixing it up, and you know that gets all the nice fresh oil around it, pull and, it down to the correct rate. And, and it smells like somebody would just peeled out in their car and, and left a lot of rubber on the oh, road. Oh, right this there. is dreadful. Accurate. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's, if we had some cold butter, would you be able to go right through that pretty easily? Some cold butter, hot butter, hot butter whatever, any, kind of any butter. Any kind of butter, yeah. yeah. That, that margarine? Be, no, not hot, margarine. Right. <laughs> hot I'm actually going to wipe it right here. Okay, all right. I'll get my stuff out of the way. Out of the way. Well, yeah. Just, yeah. Wipe the knife right there. Let's go right now while you do that to uh, the temperatures we have to 77 degrees. So I need to ask you there, uh, Kevin, you're working with a, a lot of heat, uh, hot flames, and you've got a full, uh, have, have you singed anything? I did just last week, yes. Okay. The it, whole thing was gone. He used to be yeah, right here. Yeah. Here. And boom. Right yeah, it, it took a week to get back to this right here, Tony. Yeah, he yeah. went from, uh, you know, Yosemite Sam uh, to, you know, where he is now. Uh, here we go on to the freeways. <laughs> back to Andy Carson in Southeast Portland. Quite a morning it's been for him, and uh, there's more to come. Good morning, Andy. Oh, yes, yes. In fact, Kim, you just saw right there where they uh, put the knife in the uh, oil, yes. and the flames came up, and then it's been, it's uh, right now sitting in this uh, bucket of ash because then that cools it uh, evenly and then also helps to clean the oil off. Correct, Kevin? Indeed. Okay, what's, what's this process with the next stage that we have here so what happens after we harden it is the, the blade is brittle so we want to soften it we go after we go through a series of tempering mm -hmm. which makes which removes the brittleness from the blade and gives it that nice flex we do this is called differential tempering this is a little little thing Wayne showed me way back in the day is if you keep the blade edge in the water it can't get blue it can't okay. get soft right and what we're looking for now is I sand it a little bit so I can kind of see the color change but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, to bring it back up to a, uh, a blue heat. You know, that uh -huh. brings it up uh -huh. to about 300, 400 degrees. And I'm using just a little propane torch. And if you look kind of carefully, you can see the color starting to change there. Mm. And it looks really neat. It's a whole rainbow effect of, of straw all the way up through purple and into blue. And the reason why you want to do this, because the finished product on the knife, you want the blade, of course, to be nice and sharp. And then how do you want the, uh, as it goes up along the blade? Right? We want the back of this, what we call the spine. Mm -hmm. We want the spine to be nice and soft so that it can take any impact. You know, chef's knife, you can use chopping, right. um, hunting knives if you're bopping or uh -huh. doing anything like that, swinging it. That's when you want a nice soft back because that'll absorb all the impact. It'll allow it um, to, you know, send the vibrations through and it has somewhere to release rather than it all just being hard and brittle. And you won't find that in your typical knife that's manufactured. Well, you will find that in a typical knife that's manufactured. Um, they, they all get tempered. We just go through multi-step gotcha. tempering process. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of those knives are, are put through just big machines and do it. I personally He's doing harden it. and yeah, there it is. temper each knife. Fascinating stuff. Let's go right now to uh, some temperatures. I actually want to talk a little bit about uh, mostly sunny. Highs both days up to 77 degrees. That is your weather.
And there it is, Tony. Yeah. Knives of all shapes. Uh, what do I do with this? You can take a look at it if you want. Oh, I can take you a look at it. Color change there? Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Hey, Andy, I want to ask you a question. When you were hitting um, your hook earlier, it's like metal against metal. Can you describe what that felt like? Because it seemed like it would hurt um, your arm. Uh, it, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it, it gave a little bit. There was a little bit of the, of the bounce right there uh -huh. that, uh, that came with it as, as you're pounding on it. I just didn't want to burn myself or smash a finger. <laughs> that was what was going through my mind right there. Yes, must prioritize. And Kelly, up, I want to hear about that chalkboard behind you at some point this morning, too. It looks fascinating back there. Uh, more to come yes. uh, with the Andy this morning. Off we go to the freeways, right? Right now, we're going to turn back to Andy Carson. He's in southeast Portland with our forecast and more in this great place. It uh, has these handmade products. Oh, yeah, and we're going to uh, continue working on the knives that we've been showing you. We have to have the handles, otherwise it's, you know, it's uh, difficult to use. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. Let's go right now to the cycling forecast of the day today. Uh, Andy Carson has explored the power of fire and steel this morning. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we know we've been making knives, or at least watching people make knives. They need handles uh, because if, if you just had this right here, that would be a bit of a challenge to try to uh, negotiate through and be very comfortable. I'm with Crow right here, and uh, you are one of the guys that does the, uh, the whole handle issue, right? I am. I do this about six hours a day. <laughs> You're sanding for six hours a day. So that goes from that stage, and then, and then what stage is this right here? Uh, this is the initial stage for handling. We take various woods, everything from spalt and maple, to Picard or Baduke, and uh, we put on here with various adhesives, and then we shape it and pin it, and it gets to this stage. So that's the stage we're in right now. Correct. And we, uh, we're, we're sanding this, and this is what, what grade of sandpaper? This is a coarse grade. This is 120. Okay, and so you'll do this for like anywhere from 100 to 1,000 strokes? Yeah, sometimes more depending on how severe the handle is. And then, and then once you do that, then you move on to the next level. That's right. And how many, how many levels do you have? Well, we go from 120 to 220 to 320 to 400, 1500, and then we buff it. <laughs> and, then, and then you finally buff it. That's right. You're a patient, patient <laughs> man. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> and, then, and then eventually it gets to be a, a beautiful, I mean, that, that just is as smooth as, as possible. I mean, that's yeah. just crazy. We uh, try and pay attention to the small details. We will not send it out if it has scratches in the metal. It really is a labor of love. It's it, patience, attention to detail. It is. And, and this thing can then last for generation after generation generation after generation. Just, yeah, it is definitely an heirloom. Yes, yes it is. Uh, just really, really neat stuff that we're learning here. Uh, again, at Oaks Bottom Forge, and uh, you can even come down here and learn how to do this yourself, or just buy the knives, or, or whatever else they have. Uh, let's go right now. Talk about where we have the potential of seeing some severe weather. All right, let's get back to Andy Carson now. He's had quite a morning. Good morning, Andy. Yes, yes, so Oaks Bottom Forge here this morning, and uh, you see this particular part of machinery right here. Uh, Tom made that this morning, uh, and and it's specifically for this. What is and what is this? That's a railroad spike. Okay, a high carbon railroad spike. So it's specifically for uh, putting that into the fire, mm -hmm. and it fits just fine. Now there's a ton of other things that you guys do here that you teach here, including what is this right here? This is we call copper smithing. And how does that work? <clears throat> so that's a series of uh, of blows that are put very precisely right next to each other to form form the beginning of, of a bowl and you circle in towards the middle. And you keep doing that for ever. Ever. <laughs> so it could be from here uh, to uh, here to, to even a ladle when you throw a handle on there. Mm -hmm. uh, just name off some of the other classes that you're teaching over there. Uh, book binding, uh, leather work, chain mail. Uh, basket weaving. Basket weaving. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> and jewelry. And jewelry. Uh, possibly two different kinds of jewelry. All kinds of stuff. So you can check them out and uh, you can really uh, get some crafty things that not very many people ha are able to do. Old uh, world crafts. Yeah, old world stuff. In fact, uh, they made a, a ring for me right here and this is made out of... A horseshoe nail. A horseshoe nail. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh, let's go right now to the temperatures we have around the Pacific Northwest here this morning. 77 degrees. Now let's go to Tony for a look at traffic. Yeah, Tony. quick tip for you here. Uh, hide that ring because Kim's got her eye on it. She wants that. <laughs> That's right, she does. Yes, yeah, she's already sizing it up. Uh, here we go through the curves. I five north. You need to head down to the forge in southeast Portland and check yes, out some of the yes. great cutlery. Well done this morning. Awesome big, stuff. Big thanks to everybody here at to Oaks Bottom Forge for uh, showcasing what it is they can do here, and, and they do it very well. They, of course, have a website, and it's uh, oaksbottomforge.com. And, huh? What? Oaksbottomforge.com. Yes, yes. 
No, don't pay attention to the man behind the camera. And we are, uh, they can, you can find their knives all over the city. Uh, you can buy those great stuff and get classes here as well. Let's go right now to the uh, seven day forecast. We're going to see the seven degrees real quick. Tony, on my Facebook page, I've got the final picture uh, of me with uh, Mr. Letterman at his retirement party oh, yeah. later today. I'll show three fourths of my appearances I made on the show. So uh, perfect. Check out the, that whole Facebook thing. Yeah. So thanks so much, guys. And right now, that final shot looks like an album cover for Mumford and Sons. So just to hold that position, we'll take a snapshot of you. Out we go to I-5 <laughs> Southbound.